Thanks for the Okay. I won't get into the debate schedule with you, but I, I find it hard to believe that you're going to be able to. Did, did, you, did you have another page on? Yeah, I had a question about the elementary school. Um, when I read that proposal, again, I'm just wondering, is the footage of the addition bigger than what was originally planned on, on the last project? Does it appear to be to me square footage wise? So was the addition was more square footage than what was approved by the voters? Roll we'll, we'll see, uh, the oh, original. I don't have the number with me, I'm sorry. I didn't bring it. What, what is your square footage of the addition? What is it, about a thousand feet?
validate every need and look at all your options. And I just don't see that as having done that. Victoria. So just let me say, all that is part of the case. And basically, stage two is different. It is going into more detail from the decisions in place and stuff. Well, I, I, don't, I don't recall seeing that. There's a checklist in the, in the document that you put online, and it lists, it's a letter from Mr. DeSilver outlining what checks have been met that, you know, you've got all your documents in order and they're satisfied with. And there was only one that had a check mark, maybe two, and there probably were 20 criteria areas. And one of them was the um, satisfactory explanation of, uh, of all the options that had not been checked off. So, so what happens? We did, we did do that exercise in that chicken and it was on um, this, this school district was very advanced in, in how they handle the options. Typically, we only use the options evaluations in stage two, but we did them early on in the master plan. Um, and then, as a matter of fact, we did do another layer of options evaluations, so to speak, in the last couple months where we looked at science rooms with this thing called the window wall. Then, uh, but with the extension is on the middle, and then the since, so we moved into the other side. So there's been a, a very extensive series of options that have been a discussion between the educators and the architecture to make it work for the best and the best outcome. It was confusing to read that document, though, because it, it jumps in my mind from, um, okay, the five-year capital plan to the application right. to the previous application. But the bottom line is, there is a section in that stage two application. Yeah, I'm gonna, there is a section in that stage two application that says we had six options, we investigated three of them. So as long as everybody's clear about that, I'm fine. Yeah. Does anybody else uh, like to come in for the council on the school to make? I'm sorry, go ahead. All right, um, you know, I, uh, can you all hear my voice? Yeah. Fine. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yell at my grandpa's voice. I, I think, of what was for my son and when some people here in this room came to school here. In the field of science and mathematics, it has expanded so greatly. When I think of a few years ago, our valedictorian, a brilliant young lady, went to medical school. And let me tell you, it's just because she's the stubbornest person I know that she didn't throw it away. It was so difficult. We must provide various sciences for these children. It's not just chemistry. You have to go, I would like to see like a greenhouse. We could have people in this field, in the environmental field. But it's a standing room. It's, you have to have setups, and it should remain that way. You know, when we were there, let's face it, when we started off with the science, chemistry, not too much of anything else. But we have an obligation to provide. And you know, we have some great minds that have come out of the school. And I just think if we would have to have the extra, I remember cutting courses. If you only had five, no, no accelerated. But on the other hand, if we'll state mandated, those classes would children that need an extra help. We can't do it. We have to provide for these gifted students. We don't know what to go down, what could be down the line. In science today, this the field is so vast. You know, I was going to say, let's cut out an athletic field and put it in a science lab. I'm going to move on to that one. Um, just please. Just go out and think what they're doing out there and what we must provide for us. I'd like to just be that on that, Mr. Mayor, because I agree with you 100%. And you know, some of this, the members of this committee are, are very aware, very well aware of this, not still widely known amongst towns that we've lost dozens of students to local charter schools because relatively we don't provide, relatively the type of courses that the average 21st century student is looking for. Um, so I'm really excited for the prospect of having six science labs. 
I think that uh, can help us in the future uh, establish the type of really unique, innovative, and renowned program that we already have in so many other facets and so many other programs in the Springfield School Department. Our music program is a statewide renowned program. Our academics on the whole are, are statewide and renowned. So to be able to look in the future and say, we can provide our students a biomedical CTE, forensic CTE, and other uh, science-based CTE programs that will help not just attract new students to our district, but also keep our talented students here. That's, a, that's an investment we should be excited to make. So I think that's a wonderful thing that we have these science labs. I think that's a wonderful investment in the future. And uh, I, I think that we're really fortunate to be looking forward to that. Hey. Hi. Can I speak? No, just one second. I'll come okay. down here one second. I'm just going to let everybody go say and stick with you. If I may, I just, I have to a question. Close, I don't think that's going to reach. Um, I, I'm under the impression that we have had to be in constant touch with Ryan throughout this process. And I just want to know if you are comfortable that we have covered all of our bases with this mission and that you are comfortable with what we're doing. Again, I, I am so optimistic that we will be approved and we will be in a position that we can start work right away. And I just want to clarify with one point uh, that Mr. Jones said, because some, some people may say, well, that's good that people are leaving town and going to other schools, except that we have to pay for them. And it costs us hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to pay for those kids to go out of district. It's putting a tremendous drain on our system. We need to retain our kids here. Okay, you're up. All right, hello. My name is Lauren Nelson. I'm the science department chair. I'm so happy to hear so much positive talk about the sciences. It's really exciting. I don't really think I have to say much to justify why we need the science labs, but I just wanted to touch upon the number of rooms because I feel like it's probably hard to imagine exactly what it's like working in the science classrooms, but I do it every day. So I can kind of paint a picture for you why I think that's important to have a room for each science teacher. So when you're scheduling the different classes, like most of our teachers teach two or three different science subjects. And if they were going to be sharing rooms with various other science teachers, they probably would be in more than one room and they'd be going to different rooms throughout the school. So something like biology, for example. I teach biology maybe in one period of 105 and I need slides and I need microscopes in there. And then later on in the day, I'm gonna be teaching biology again, but in a different room. So all of those supplies again with like just a limited time between classes to try to roll them all on a plate down there would be difficult. And then in addition, I'm probably gonna teach something else besides biology, I'll teach physical science or, you know, just a bunch of different classes that we have, physiology, biotech. So the variety of the different setup we would need would be really challenging and you'd probably spend your entire prep time running to all the various rooms and trying to set up what you need for each class. It would be extremely inefficient. One of the things with the design plan is to eliminate a prep room, and the concern for that, um, you know, they were asking me, will that be a big deal? And I said, well, if we keep our own rooms and everyone has a room, that isn't a big deal because I can prep in my room and I can get everything ready while my class is empty and I don't have students during my prep time. So that loss of space for the prep room is a gain in the classroom. So I think that would work out. And um, another thing with just like the size of the room and just the safety issues. If you could just see what it's like with a lab in my room, I have two sinks. One's on my desk and the other is just one in the back. So after a lab, I'll tell all the students, we'll put everything in this bin over here and then leave in this back area and we'll send one person at a time to go wash some of the dishes and dump some stuff out. And then, of course, they're not gonna have enough time. So at the end, I'm gonna be doing all of it 
um, during my prep time instead of preparing for the next lab. So it's, it's really inefficient and it's dangerous when I have kids all trying to crowd around one area. They're all like, well, I needed water. I guess I'll stand over here and wait for a little while. It, it's just, it's very difficult. So to have all of the stations with the water and the gas jets, to have all the classrooms would really be beneficial. Um, that is all I have to say. If you, you know, have questions about science, questions for me, feel free anytime. Thank you. you, know, you that's, just the kind of that's just the kind of perspective we need, because right now everybody's up here is talking theoretically, right? But she's actually talking real life experience, and I think that goes a long way. I think it's out there right now. 